Toyed Asadi is a political commentator who joins us, and we also have Jason Anruha, a political analyst, also joining us. Gentlemen, welcome. Toyed Asadi, first to you. Uh, you know, this is nothing new when it comes to U.S. sanctions and how it is in particular uh, affecting the health industry in Iran. Of course, now during the COVID uh, pandemic, it has uh, gone to a, a further and a, to a further level, and that is that is that is clearly ha having a correlation with the deaths that are occurring. Um, when you when you uh, put this into perspective, uh, what should be done when it comes to this uh, U.S. move regarding sanctions on Iran? Uh, look, all I can say that what you said is basically right. Uh, this is a continuation of again a same hostile approach that the United States has started. Uh, pertaining to Iran for, for over 40 years, and we have observed the same trajectory moving on for, for several decades. So, uh, what I can tell you is that all the, all the uh, let's say, this hostile foreign policy approach that we see uh, from the United States should be considered in a bigger puzzle in which the, the, the people in Washington and the United States basically tries to put maximum pressure and implement a campaign of maximum pressure apparently run by any means possible. And that any means actually, as you have seen, uh, in a very, very wide spectrum of tools. Uh, some of them are legal, some of them are not, some of them are human, some of them are not. So specifically when it, came, when it comes to the last uh, example, the latest pandemic, we observe that the United States uh, indeed uh, resorts to every possible option in order to implement pressure upon not Iranian state, but Iranian nation as well. So throughout the pandemic, we observe that the United States uh, did all it could in order to prevent foreign countries from, let's say, helping and providing humanitarian assistance to Iran Needless to say that it happened uh, when the United States, diplomatically speaking, happened to face a huge, uh, disastrous, I can say, failure, uh, specifically at the Security Council. We saw that the country was not able to, uh, let's say, uh, find a consensus in order to place further sanctions or extend a further embargo upon Iran. That means that, in a sense, the international community has, uh, came, has came to this awareness that this unilateralist approach that the United States tries to implement uh, towards Iran is not effective anymore, is not legal, and is not human anymore. Uh, but the thing is that, at the same time, we have a lot of interest, specifically economically speaking, uh, which paves the way for the United States in order to uh, implement more and more sanctions on Iran. Uh, getting back to the question, I mean, regarding the pandemic, uh, what we saw was another realization of this hostile approach, uh, which knows indeed no border in putting pressure and in being cruel. But just let's remind that this is not the only example showing and uh, very, in a very clear way, the fact that this hostile approach continues. So if you just take a look at the history, there are several other examples that the United States has done a lot of illegal, inhuman uh, courses of action in order to put pressure upon the Iranian nation. Uh, just to conclude with uh, the point that comes to my mind is that there is a possibility of, uh, let's say, existence of conflict between states and the state. So, but what we what we are what we are basically talking about is not about states, but about people. So, on on one hand, you see, you see that some people in Washington, including President Trump, putting forth the claim that there is no hostility between Iranians between. U.S. administration and Iranian people, and at the same time, the same administration uh, putting forth a lot of lies and putting forth a lot of pressure upon Iran, which results in a very bad situation for the people in Iran. This is the point that we need to pay close attention to. 
Uh -huh. Jason and Ruha, just a couple of weeks ago, you had a bunch of UN uh, human rights experts compile a report, uh, and they uh, gave that out. And uh, the report was that uh, these uh, sanctions that are being imposed by the U.S. is costing lives and that they need to be lifted. They put that uh, somewhat in the context of the COVID-19, but at the same time mentioned uh, not only Iran, but they mentioned Yemen, they mentioned Venezuela, um, uh, countries that are, that are sanctioned, that uh, human lives are being lost there. Um, and it's interesting that the UN actually has Yemen on its, uh, on its sanctions list. The country that's being bombed is the country that's being sanctioned. Uh, and then uh, to get your reaction, when it comes down to sanctions, the whole theory and the whole application it has less than 5% batting average. So uh, not, not that great a tool, but yet it's costing lives. Yes, uh, the, the point of sanctions is, uh, I think perhaps the, the question here about the report is what the stated goal of the, the sanctions are. I mean, many of them believe that, uh, that the point of sanctions is to force the country to bend to the will of what is the rule of law of the UN, and I don't believe that to be the case. I think that the point of the sanctions is to cause harm. Now, if we understand it in that entirely different context, then we understand why this 5% uh, is not terribly significant, because it's about hurting the countries that are under the thumb of U.S. imperialism. Frankly, the, all these countries do carry one thing in common. They are all resistant to imperialism and uh, its junior partners, such as Saudi Arabia, Israel, etc. And these sanctions are not designed to essentially change politics or to uh, to essentially uh, incentivize a, a new way of ruling or something like that, which is what the UN report, uh, to me, uh, kind of suggests. It's about hurting people. When you're blocking medicines, when you're blocking medical technology that's very much necessary, even under normal conditions, let alone pandemic conditions, as much of the world is facing right now, we see that this is really about causing pain and misery. This is about overstretching the resources of the countries that are being uh, punished with these sanctions here. And I, I think that's uh, pretty clear from what's happening, that discrepancy from how things are, from uh, uh, what's perceived to uh, what these sanctions are actually for. So I think we understand that. We understand it in that context. Now, this is a completely and wholly inhuman way of being but this is simply this is simply murder of innocent people whose only crime is being in a country that doesn't want to be a lackey of the united states and its junior partners but this is as cold-blooded evil as uh, the, the legacy of colonialism uh, many of them uh we re refer to the uh the the dutch uh tulip uh, incident uh, uh, many uh, many decades ago. Uh, all of this is, is the kind of inhumanity that's shown towards the people, the colonized people, or in this case, uh, the victims of imperialism that are intended to serve the economic interests of the global elite or the imperialist countries. And when we understand that, that, that there is no concern for these people whatsoever, this idea that somehow freedom and democracy or a better rule of law or whatever happens to be the, the boogeyman used in, in uh, each individual case, uh, frankly, falls apart. And we see the true face of imperialism and empire, of nothing more than unmitigated evil that is trying to destroy people and is destroying people, killing people, uh, simply so that their countries can be subjugated for economic gain. Thank you very much for that. Uh, that's Jason Anuha, political analyst from Ontario. And thank you, Tohid Asadi, political commentator in the capital, Tehran, who spoke to us. And that does it for our news review. Thanks for tuning in.